Here's an interesting, and this is going to be different for both of you again, because you, you see these are radically different communities. Uh, how does your community make decisions which affect the whole? So how do you make a decision that's going to affect the whole community? And what goes along with that are two other things. How are those with dissenting points of view addressed? Because that needs to be addressed. And also, in what ways does the community ensure that decisions are carried out? So how do you make the decisions? How do you address those with people who have different views? And uh, how do you ensure that decisions actually get followed through with? I can go. I mean, it's easy for us. Like, part of um, what we have in each – so in each house – we, beforehand, like part of the screening process too, is we, we have a what's called a team captain in each house. And so for us, it makes it – and that's that's sort of person that meets with what's called the city director. So like the city director would be um, the staff person that works in the city and, um, you know, and, and do all the training, like set up and facilitate the community and the learning. And uh, the team captain actually is one of the team members who lives in the house. And so – uh, every week, there's team captain meetings. So they get together with the other team captains, with the city director, and, and, and a lot of logistics and things like that. Whatever's coming up uh, is kind of articulated through that. Um, but then also some of the needs that arise um, in the house, a lot of times um, that might be articulated through the team captain. Um, and so it, and for us, like, um, and one of the things I teach is, you know, the one-on-ones that I talked about. And, um, and if folks, you know, as issues arise, we're like, hey, you need a straight shoot. Don't, like, keep it to yourself. Don't bury it because if you do, it builds and builds and builds. And then by, you know, near the end of the year, you're like, you know, you need to talk to this person. I can't because I hate them, you know. Like, and you, it, it's really hard to, like, get in a real intimate way with them, you know, because you just can't stand them. And so, but if you're tr- troubleshooting as you're going and straight shooting as issues arise, like, um, that's really helpful. And sometimes when people are so radically different and they can't come to terms with what's going on, um, that's a lot of times where a, the city director may come in and, uh, and be able to kind of help work through some of that. Um, I know when, when I was living with the Simple Way, which is an intentional community uh, in Philly, um, you know, when we first moved in, there was like for us, there was just there was there wasn't a lot like there wasn't a single a leader. There wasn't any um, real direction. It was almost like we we're li- living at the least common denominator of what we we're all like. We all had these gifts, but nobody was really living up to them because. Whereas some kind of, and it wasn't until we brought somebody from the outside who was able to help us kind of process through um, that really kind of helped us kind of take the next step as a community. And I see that as, as, as one of the benefits, I guess, from the mission year is rather than just putting these people in a house and letting them go at it, you know, see in August, you know, but like you're able to like kind of, kind of <clears throat> disciple them through, you know, and walk them through it and have like a voice that kind of comes in and, and it's not so much like, uh, you know, a boss coming in and telling them what to do as much as it's sort of like a, a guide, you know, helping them go through some of the decisions and help them to think deeply about the decisions they make, whether they're good or bad. You know, so. And how do you make sure that they carry out the decisions that they um, make? I think uh, part of it is us knowing them and being with them, but part of it too is that's some of the role of the team captains. And if they don't, um, and what we do is we have what's called uh, individuals. And so every month we'll go and, and spend time with each person in that house for like, 45 minutes an hour just kind of shooting the breeze like what's going on what's happening and sometimes like once you do that you know five six people in a house like there may be themes that emerge and things that are happening and so what you'll do is like do a team dinner that, that the city director would have with the folks you're able to address those head on okay. and so uh for us let's see decisions get made as low as close to the action as possible like as you say about the offering it gets made by the people who put the money in the pot um, we don't have a lot of hierarchy to help make decisions or a process for it. Um, How do you we, deal with disagreement, Ron? In the oh, that's simple. If there's any dissent, you just start a new church. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's very simple. It's not a not a problem at all. And and this uh, this idea of ensure. We've never heard that word before. Um, like, like Lewis and Clark, if you tell them, how are you going to ensure that nobody gets sick or dies while you're going? Nah, right. or, uh. But, you know, maybe the president of the United States, I guess it was Thomas Jefferson there, he said, how are you going to ensure that somebody doesn't burn the White House down? Well, you can do a few things to kind of make sure of that because right. you've got an army and stuff. But we don't have any armies, so we don't know what ensure means. We, we try. We 
wonder, we guess, we um, you know, kind of like Naomi and Ruth. She had her fix-it solution. Remember when her two sons died, and she told Ruth, "You go back to your people, okay? I'm going back to my people. That's the decision." And Ruth says, "I don't think so. Your people will be my people. Your people, will be, your God will be my God. Where, whither thou goest, I'll go. I think I'll do that instead." Um, okay. Uh, so, you know, they settled their difference by one person just saying, I'm going to do this. And, and then when they got back, uh, they're talking about how we're going to live now with no men, no sons, no husband. Uh, Naomi says, I don't know, why don't you go hang out at the field? They got some food there, some grain and stuff, see what happens. So that's what she did, go and see what happens. And after she came back for a little while and realized... Uh, they're kind of nice to me over there, especially this guy Boaz. So Lou said, well, I know where he sleeps. Why don't you go sleep with him and see what happens? And she did. Uh, and so that's how decisions get made, more by just give it a try and see what happens. Um, and like, you know, wake up in the morning and see what has grown. Uh, so it's a lot less emphasis on making the right decisions. We talk about what we call piecemeal progress as, as opposed to lump sum uh, growth lump sum is go to the bank, take out a loan, uh, hire a staff member, uh, buy your land, <coughs> build your building, whatever it takes to get your program started, uh, and then hopefully, you know, you've done your homework, you've you know covered all the bases, and whatever your big splash, your starting date is of your uh -huh. new church or whatever, uh, even if you haven't don't have a building, still so you got a, a school that you've rented or something. That that's going to be enough, and you got the right music planned, and you got the your PA equipment to put it on with. Um, but the problem is, you've used up all your resources, and so then when problems come along, you may or may not have anything to do to, to work with, and the tendency is to go bankrupt because it, it, it feeds on itself. Mm -hmm. uh, a piecemeal is you take one step, look around, say what, you no, know, where do we want to take the next step, instead of planning ten steps and having a three-year plan. Um, and so decision making is very tentative, shared, and close to the action. I like you said close to the action. Get back and like the piecemeal. I understand. You went back and I said, well, how do you deal with dissenting viewpoints? You said, well, you just start another church. Um, that's well, serious. That's I, I, mean, I understand that's that that's true. serious. But and you kind of see, you know, the mission splitting in the New Testament. You know, Paul and Barnabas had the argument. But how do you do it to try to make how do you try to cre keep at least? You said a try to make. We don't try to make. Try, try to try to. We don't care if people hate each other. We don't try to make it happen. We count on the fact that the Holy Spirit is here, and if people need to get along with each other and love each other, that's part of God's plan. It, it'll be revealed uh, to somebody, and somebody will speak up. And you know, somebody's been to a, a marriage counselor to give some good advice that could throw in their two cents worth uh -huh. about what to do and so that's we wait and we pray and we hope and try and see what happens we really don't try to make sure that it splits up evenly or make sure that nobody gets hurt or make sure that it, you know mm -hmm. I know that was a bad word I'm trying to say again I want to understand I mean, I how, how do you try to, to continue some kind of relationship when you have an argument that actually we don't. splits something so you don't you no. just don't that's fine no that you could have just said that. We, okay. <laughs> we, do have, we do have reach on a, you know, like a meeting once every couple of months or so, once in a while. Uh, we get together uh, over in Philly, and whoever wants to come can come, and that's the most that we do. We don't beg people to come. We put it on the website and send out some emails, and 50, 60 people might show up, and we don't know what's going to happen when we get there, but they're from all different churches. Mm -hmm. Another thing that's where we run into this is with differences. Uh, part of our picture is that traditional churches all have a, a part, a piece of the truth. Mm -hmm. uh, some churches are evangelical. Others are good in the contemplative life. Some in social justice. Some in charismatic gifts. Uh, all those, you know, some in, in uh, liturgy and, and uh, sacraments. And So different churches have different strengths. Some in holiness mm -hmm. of life. And we really hope for people to get together from all different backgrounds. So we get a Quaker and a Catholic and a Baptist together, and, and they're going to do church. Mm -hmm. It's exciting to see what they come up with because it's, it's not either one or the other, but it's, it's, a, it's something that hopefully will include the best 
of what God's been doing throughout the centuries that we've been dividing ourselves up about. Cool. Thank you. This this will be another fun one. <laughs>